Hey, what's up? Welcome to the Rock and Roll James YouTube channel. Today, my special guest is Seamus Cox. Hey, what's up, everybody? I've known Seamus for a long, long time. Been like 25 years since I've seen him. So you were here for a while, and then you where, where did you go? Where you been, man? I oh my god, it's I've been coast to coast, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, north and south. Um, when you left the Rio Grande Valley, went uh, went back to Chicago. Okay, uh, uh, took a job with the union. So we had started Stone Heavy down here. Uh, yeah. Foy, Jesse, uh, uh, Leas, and I Bones, um, and uh, you know we were doing really well and uh, getting following. Things were growing and and I. Uh, we just the, and see this is the this is where I was getting to the part about the, the making the move why this was the right thing for me. Um, coming down here, I I learned a lot about about big fish in a small pond, small fish in a big pond. You know, um, and where you want to be. Uh, you know, some people are happy. Uh, you know, being in a cover band and and uh, they play every weekend and all that stuff and that and. and and that's great, and that's satisfying to them. And there's that's they're they're musicians. Mm -hmm. That's what they are. And I think it's more opportunity that presents being able to be an original musician. Uh, opportunity, as in family, life, kids, jobs, things like that. You know, where you get caught up. And um, so coming down here, where things are a little slower. It kind of slowed everything down for me yeah. and, and Bones. Uh, and this was uh, pre-internet yeah. days. I mean, oh. now with the internet, I mean, we're about fast everywhere. Oh my God. But, you know, back in the day before internet, here in the Rio Grande Valley, um, the Ozzy album, for example, would uh, be released in April. We'd probably get it in August. You know, yeah. it's just it's like that true. back in the 80s and early 90s. So we didn't have any of that. We had magazines. Uh, we had TV shows on television that we had to wait <laughs> weekly if we wanted to hear anything or something like that. We had some MTV, and MTV did do a little bit, you know, but they played a lot of, uh, you know, no they played some station. videos, and then they started going into the into the uh, the TV show with uh, the Oz, the uh, Osborns yep, and stuff yep. like that. So that's when Which, it started like evolving into a TV show, uh, uh, you know, channel. But we didn't have that, and that's why he's mentioning yeah. that. Because if you're listening to what he's saying right now, you're probably saying, "Dude, the valley's just as fast as the rest of the world." You know, <laughs> uh, well, it is growing. It is growing at a fast yeah. pace. Yeah. But at the era that he's speaking about. There was no internet. There was no email. Mm -hmm. None of that. We didn't have any computers at all. We didn't have iPhones. We didn't no. have landlines. That's what no. we had. So then, you know, just wanted to get that straight out yeah. to our audience because uh, a lot of you youngsters probably don't understand what he's talking about, and that's what it's all about. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know, we didn't have much down here in South Texas. We're basically the last ones to get everything yeah. uh, back in the day. So we, we it really taught it really taught us um, to get out on the street. Mm -hmm. And on the ground, I mean, you know, you know as well as I, because you were out with us too, like yeah, passing you, out flyers. You, like you gotta, you, even if it's not your show, you're out there. If you're, if, if there are quiet riots in town, you were outside. If you didn't have tickets, we we were playing music for people and handing out yeah. CDs and flyers and yeah. like mailing lists, like putting stamps, like literally stamping yeah. and sending stuff. And you had to be present. Mm -hmm. And and it was those things that like I would tell anybody that's in a band and they're listening. And it doesn't matter if it's a cover band or original band, like. That footwork and even having one or two guys in the band that that have the availability to be able to stay out mm -hmm. and go from place to place and just have your face present. Mm -hmm. um, it was kind of like Instagram without, you know, like yeah. <laughs> it was like real life Instagram. We were everywhere. Yeah. You looked up. We were there. Yeah. Um, and we kind of took that. We took that. It's funny you mentioned the uh, the Osborns because uh, I was going to get to that in the progression of where I've been. But uh, we then went up to like we. Here's another thing, and I would tell people this, uh, anybody this. We went to South by Southwest. We we got denied. We we applied to play in Stone Heavy, um, and we were denied. And instead of just being like, oh, we got to work harder and all that, we were like, no, we're good enough. And we packed up a boom box and CDs. And while people were standing in line to go in, mm -hmm. we were out on the sidewalk with our yeah, boom box, yeah. introducing ourselves. And you're talking 1994, 95. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. About 22 years ago, something yeah. like 23 years ago. Um, and the people from South by Southwest actually noticed. Yeah. And kind of came out and were like, hey. 
this is this is pretty cool like, yeah. they didn't have a place for us we were a little too heavy mm. at that time the bands that they had coming through there were like Grungy. well like it is not very yeah indie grunge soul you know. asylum uh, yeah, you know, yeah. Stuff. like we're just talking about that about uh, the era of uh, of the '90s when the grunge and, and soul asylum, yeah. REM type of songs, U uh, two and stuff like that, and uh, and then we were talking about how Pantera and those other bands were yeah. doing what they were yeah. doing without having to conform to what the radio and the masses wanted, and they were building their own tall yep. base. So you never know, you know. Um, so you went out to South by Southwest, and this was yeah. 1994, 95, trying to get some uh, attention to Just, the band. Just trying to like get somebody to just let us play. We 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 would tell people, uh, you know, we would we'll play for food and give us gas money, mm-hmm. you know, uh, because the next time we come back, because we'll we'll put on a show, but we'll be back. And you know, the clubs they always say, "Oh, you won't be back. You're coming from out of town. You're, you're not yeah. coming back." <laughs> and they're like, they're getting a sweet deal because they have food in the bar already, so they're just giving us pizza, right? Mm-hmm. And the, just some fifty bucks for gas and maybe a hotel room, one room at a Motel Six. The night might cost them a hundred bucks, mm-hmm. right? This is the way I looked at it when we would tell people this. Well, they ate it up, but then we would come back and we would charge the door, yeah. <laughs> you know, and and you get them and uh, and they'll do it. But it's a little different now because you have the internet and you have all this. We were talking about this psycho plague um, and shout out to anybody and everybody that came out last night. That was awesome, especially you blew my mind. I had no idea you were coming, <laughs> man. No idea. Somebody said, uh, one of the sound guys, Ray, was like, oh, no, I got to take off. I got to go help out Whiskey D. And I was like, what? You're going to Whiskey D? I was like, <laughs> you know, so I didn't think I would see you. Yeah. Um, and uh, when you walked up, I was floored, man. I was, yeah, well, I was I had to make, very I had happy to, make to see a, you. I, I made it a point to go see yeah, you, man, because, yeah. like I said, I hadn't seen him in 25 years. Yeah. So after you all, uh, you were done with, uh, with, with Stone Heavy, you came well, back to the Rio Grande Valley, and then what happened? No, so, so from there, we actually decided, we came back and... It kind of decided let's move to Chicago as a band, mm-hmm. and ooh, that's a big move. And that's my point. Mm-hmm. We 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 were able like the things that we did. We felt like we could do this, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. So um, I I got a job up there. I was offered a job as a uh, union sprinkler fitter um, for uh, local two eighty one out of Chicago, and uh, you know you're talking. I had no health insurance down here. I had you know what I mean, mm-hmm. like I. Yeah. I had a kid on the way, mm-hmm. that kind of thing. I was, I, this is insurance. It's a union job. Um, and I took a pay cut to do it, you know, um, knowing that eventually I would get my money back, that kind of thing. Uh, but uh, set up Jesse and Elias with jobs, Foy. Um, and, you know, we Jesse and uh, Elias came up. And, man, we went out everywhere. We did the same thing in Chicago. We went everywhere. Mm-hmm. Um it, so then the guys did follow you up there. Yeah, yeah. Um, Foy was kind of stuck. He had some stuff going on at the time. He was trying to make it up. And it was just that's what kind of was ending Stone Heavy because then, you know, Bones Bones and I had this, he had this four track, but we would write these little riffs and just silly things. And we were getting more into – Bones and I were getting more into like stabbing westward and filter and gravity kills mm-hmm. and you know nine kind of inch nails nine inch nails and yeah. you know that a little more electronic digital you know um, not quite as heavy as Manson but yeah you know and so and that's that's what the Chicago scene was at that time and it was heavy in the nineties yeah man, that stuff was heavy Head, in the nineties big yeah. time. Yeah. So anyway, um, so Bones came back here, and because he's now got all these ideas, and mm-hmm. he, I think then he, you know, I'm not going to speak for him um, at all, but he, you know, it was more of a safe place then to return back to the valley, reorganize mm-hmm. his new thoughts, yeah. you know, with Psycho Plague, um, yeah. and that's what started Psycho Plague and set up the next plan. Yeah. Also. Um, so he was doing that, obviously. Um, I, you spoke with him yesterday. Or no, you haven't spoken with him yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah I spoke oh, with him did? briefly. But you, um, so you, 
you were you stayed in Chicago. The rest so of the guys stayed, came back. So Jesse stayed with me for a while, okay. and uh, I, and Jesse was up for a good long time, and I was actually thinking he was going to bring his family. So, and Jesse was the vocalist. Yeah, and here's okay. the thing: we all, the three of us at that time, were married, two of us with kids, and left families. Like we didn't, we went up solo as a band. Mm -hmm. the families were all still down here. Yeah. Because we didn't know what was going to happen, yeah. you know, and uh, you're going to move everybody up. That's a big sacrifice. It was a big, you yeah, know, huge. and so obviously shout out. Not many can do it. <laughs> Not many can um, do it. No. It, and it was tough. And Jesse finally ended up. And like up I said, in the days where we didn't have any no. texting, any, uh, you know, social media, none of that. You call your family with a landline or yeah. write them a letter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. Yeah. When I left my, my daughter, uh, Peyton, she barely... I don't want to say she barely speaks. She'd speak, but by the time I was with her full time, which was almost a year, um, she was like, "Hey, Dad, how are you? You know, like, how was your day? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know." And so I missed the because there was no internet. There's no FaceTime. There's no you know, yeah. and uh, that was tough. That yeah. was really tough. I but, could just imagine, man. Um, so then you stayed up there with Jesse. Yep. Jes Jesse then ended up going back home. Um, you know, finally family. He's like, I, I got to go. And it was fine. So I ended up, this is how the Ozfest thing. The, the Osborns, yeah, so the TV show. This is really funny. When I got back, now I, you know, now I was going to have to reorganize myself and like find a band and all, you know, and the bands mm -hmm. in Chicago were just, I don't know, man. You know, we all know this. Texas bands have a Texas sound. Mm -hmm. There's there, you could tell whether it's a country artist, a metal, you know, the Tex, uh, Texas Hippie Coalition, the, the Dangerous Toys, Pantera, you know, all the it's all just those, culturally they're it, totally it's, different. It's a, yeah. it's a sound yeah. that Texas has. Well, Chicago also has a sound. Some of it's really good. Some people like like Smashing Pumpkins, Disturbed, you know. And, it's like the blues, you know, yeah. Chicago blues and Memphis blues are totally different, yes. you know, but they're blues, you know. Yeah, but so, you can tell. Yeah. So I, I didn't really care for it because Texas was in my heart. That mm -hmm. was, is. I mean, it, it flat out. It is. It always will be. I grew up here. When people, you know, when somebody asks you where you grew up, I grew up here. I learned more about people and life and here. So when people ask me, this is home, mm -hmm. you know, um, and it is hard to leave home. It's weird coming home. But anyway, <laughs> um, I had to reorganize, so I thought the best way for me to do it was to get into a cover band, because then I'm now I'm out and I'm going to find the venues and where people are going. Because Chicago's so big, you have the suburbs that are large. You, you you could have a city in a suburb that's larger than the entire valley, you know, um, two hundred thousand people. Yeah, you know, um, so it was a good idea because I ended up getting in a Kiss tribute band. Awesome, man! And what, you uh, you were being Gene Simmons. You can't beat it, man. <laughs> You can't beat it. Because, I want to see some pictures. <laughs> dude. Well, so what we did, there were so many Kiss tribute bands in Chicago. There are a lot of them based out of Chicago. Mm -hmm. um, we decided to do, it was called Chris's Kiss, by the way. Um, we decided to do all non-makeup. Oh, oh, okay. So we did, you know... Yeah. No, we did. You know, rock tears and roll are all night. falling. Yeah, we did like lick tears. it up. We did all the heavens on fire. Yeah, we did all the good stuff that yeah. like people that you're like, oh man, that right? was a very big popular era for Kiss, right. man, with no makeup. So we ended up uh, hooking up with some of the the other masked bands mm -hmm. and would open for that, like you yeah. know, because now you're getting a full Kiss. Yeah. Like. The, the whole the eras of kiss yeah, you're getting it all yeah and uh it was kind of fun we ended up playing everywhere kansas city like we went it is a kiss tribute band people yeah. eat it up they love it and, but it also was a great stepping stone mm -hmm. because i got to meet and see all kinds of people 